This is a tutorial on using sprite sheets when creating a platformer game with Python and Pygame. And you can see here I've got a side scrolling platformer with moving platforms even and an animated main figure that'll move his her little feet. And we can go from this to level two. We've got a moving backdrop there and level two, which I admit looks a whole lot like level one, and a platform that moves up and down. So how do we do the code for this? Well, it's a, this is a continuation of a series of tutorial videos, and the tutorial videos are all listed right here. If you're just starting with this video, I recommend checking out the prior videos listed here in order, and these videos will help explain the different code that we've got working. I don't go in depth in the code that we've already covered in prior videos. I'd like to give a special shout out that the game art used in this is available for free from Kenny.nl and this guy does a wonderful job of putting out a whole lot of free to use art and if you're looking to practice your platforming skills or any types of programming skills in creating the game I'd really recommend checking out his art because it's free and it's good quality and you want to spend all your time creating art rather than actually doing programming. Okay, let's take a look at the game. First off, I import Pygame, which is common. We do this with all of them. And then the next thing I do is I import constants. This constants file is over here. So my program is broken into several different files in order to keep it organized. And constants is very, very simple. It's a short file, constants.py, which you can see right up here. It just defines some common colors, black, white, and blue, and the screen width and height for the game. That's it. You can just take this file, adjust the screen width and height as you like it, and an overall background default color as well, if you like. Okay, so not much with constants. Let's keep going. The next thing that I do is import levels. And this is a little bit more involved. Let's take a look at levels. The levels file that I have right up here starts off importing constants, so I've got that as well, and imports platforms. I need to be able to import platforms in order to create the platforms for the levels. So we need to follow this maze of code, basically, and take a look at the platforms file. And what do you know, the platforms file includes another file, the sprite sheet functions. The sprite sheet functions are what loads our sprites, so we really do need to take a look at that. So let's continue to follow this maze and look at the sprite sheet functions. Okay, here we go. Pygame, we've talked about constants. Here's a brand new class called sprite sheet. What does it do? It has a attribute called sprite sheet and this is just going to point to an image we're going to load with all the different sprite images that we have. And what is a sprite sheet? Well, let's take a look at what a sprite sheet is. I've got one of the sprite sheets loaded up here and you can see it is a group of images for a person that shows the animated steps as he or she walks and jumps. And this particular sprite sheet, rather than loading several different images, because I've got a total of 9, 10, 11 different images, rather than loading 11 images, I load one and I pull out a square for each of my sprites. So this one's got a total of 11 different sprites in it, and it's all in one sheet held as walk, p1 walk.png. I've also got another sprite sheet that has a whole lot of stuff. I'm hardly using anything out of here, but there's a lot of really cool stuff here that you can pull. So you can pull an exit sign. I've got some of my platforms that the person walks on. You can see this one's got sort of a slope over here on the left. This one's got a slope on the right, and this one's for the middle. Uh, you got a platform that sort of slopes in here. We've got brick platforms. We've got strange monsters. We've got keyholes. We've got all sorts of really great things to put onto our different platformer. And this is all one file named tiles underscore sprite sheet dot png. And rather than loading each one of these files individually, which would be a whole lot, we load one file and then we manage to basically just cut out the part that we want. 
How do we cut out the part that we want? Let's go back to our code. It is actually really easy to cut out the part that we want. This get image takes the file that we loaded here. So we load the file with our constructor and then we get images. We pass it in an x, y location and a width and a height. So the x, y location, if I go back and look at my sprite sheet, the x, y location will be the top left corner along with the width and then the height. So I need to find the top left corner of every sprite that I want which you can use a graphics program to get an idea of where that top left corner is but because they're at a regular interval you can do a little bit of math and calculate it once you get an idea of how tall and wide these sprites are provided they are all the same size and thankfully this particular sprite sheet they are. So what we do is we create a brand new image right here. This image is blank and we'll receive the image that we copy out of the sprite sheet. This takes the sprite sheet image right here places it at 0, 0 in the new image and then copies the locations that we were given, the x, y location of the sprite along with the width and height. Then we set the background color to black. The background color on the sprite sheet happens to be black. Once we set the color key to black then the image will be transparent and then I just return what I copied out. That's really all there is to the sprite sheet. So let's go back to levels. I take a look at level. This is a lot like the different level code that we had before in our prior examples. What's different is down here where I end up creating the platforms and the different levels. First off, I load a background image for this level. This is the image that's going to be used where it has all the buildings and the player doesn't actually interact with it but it provides background art and then I set a transparent color to that as well. Now with my level when I create the different platforms I've got this platforms grass middle, platforms grass right, platforms grass left, all of these different types of variables in here to specify what platform I've got in addition to the XY location of where I want it to go just like I had before. So what is this? Well, if it's got platforms dot in front of it, that means I need to go to the platforms file. And when I create platforms, I specify the x, y location and the width and height. In this case, most of the platforms are 70 wide and 70 high. And then I show the x, y location of that sprite sheet of where I wanted it. So our sprites are 70 by 70. And then I do a little bit of math calculation to get where I want from the sprite sheet my actual sprite and then I've got a generic platform class. So when you create a platform you pick one of these you pass it into the constructor here which will then pull out the x, y, the width and the height. This is all pulled out of these four values up here. And then I just use that image as my rectangle and it works fairly well. The player class is a bit more complex than what we had before, all of which is oriented towards trying to keep track of the sprite sheet so that the sprites animate the person as he or she walks left to right. This is handled by, in here, we load up all of the sprites into an array. We have walking frames when the person is going left and walking frames when a person is going right. This is a list. I'm just going to simply load one sprite in position 0, another sprite in position 1, another sprite in position 2, and so forth. So like a flip book, I will flip between these sprites, and then as I flip between the sprites, the animation will occur and will be all set. So this list goes inside of each one of these. Right now it's just an empty list. We'll need to load it. We also need to keep track of the direction the player is facing. When the person lets up off the keyboard, we need to keep whatever direction the person was last facing. It can't just pull the person's velocity from left to right because if the person's not moving at all, we need to know was the person right or is the person facing left. And we start off facing the right. When the person goes the other way, we'll start facing left and we'll pull frames from 
the left list. We keep track of the sprites that the user can bump against. None of that's new. Here we're loading the sprite sheet. We do the P1 walk that has all the different animations of our main protagonist character. Then we pull each of the different sprites. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm pulling seven sprites. There are actually 11 in the whole animation, but I got lazy and only pulled seven. And hopefully you can do better than that. But I pulled these seven and put them into the walking frames right. How do we do the walking frames left? That's pretty easy. We just do the same exact thing, but with a brand new line right here. This flips the image left to right. So this will flip it in the XY location. This will flip it in the this will flip it along the X direction. This will flip it along the Y direction. So this is Y. This is X. And I've got it set to true because I do want the person to be flipped for X, but I don't want the person to go upside down. That would be bad, so this is false, which means we don't flip the person upside down. All I need to do is load it just like I did before, flip it, and then add it to the left list instead of the right list. And then I go ahead and start the image with our starting right person frame. There you go. We've got everything set up. How do we actually manage it when the person moves? So we actually need to figure where they are on the screen. There is both the screen that the person sees and then there's the overall wide world. So the world itself is rather large if you remember and we're in a side scrolling type setup. So the person is going to have a position on the screen. They'll have an X position on the screen but then they're also going to have to adjust it based upon how far we've shifted the entire world. This is the world shift. If I could write, this would say world shift. I won't even try shift. Anyway, this is the world shift. We need to add that to X. Therefore, we take a look at the world shift right here, along with where this guy actually is on the screen. Then we take a look and I want to look at the actual position that I ended up pulling out. So this is position. I use this position down here. So I've got position here and position here. This is the overall position and I divide it by 30. Basically every 30 frames I want to switch animations on the frame. If you want the person to animate faster, you do something smaller than 30. An animation larger, you do something greater than 30. If I did it with every pixel, that would just be way, way too fast and look very, very bad. And anyway, then I mod it by the number of frames. If you'll remember, we had a total of seven frames. Therefore, it'll go zero up to six. It'll reset and it'll go zero up to six. This modulus function that we have right here, very, very useful when you want to do something with repeating patterns over a large area. Modulus, go back and look it up if you've forgotten exactly how it works. Anyway, this is for going right and this is for going left. The rest of it works pretty much the same. It's mainly just twitching this image as the individual walks along the screen. That's the most complex part of it. Another important point is the level class has something new to it with the draw. We still draw all the platforms and enemies like we did before, but I also fill a background of blue, and then on top of that, I'm putting my background image. and I don't move that along with the entire world. I actually divide it by three. That allows the person in front to move faster than the background image. So therefore, a person in front will move three times faster than the background image, giving a little bit of a sense of depth going on. This, not very complex, but it's always required to put a background image on your world and allow it to shift left and right as you're doing that side-scrolling platformer. That's all there is to it. Go ahead and give the program a try. Learn how to create your own platformer, uh, find your own art, and give me a shout sometime with what games that you created. I would be interested in seeing what you managed to create on your own using Python and Pygame.